everyone on site. Hello, everyone in the digital sphere. We look very much forward to um, our joint session, Navigating Tomorrow, the importance of futuring and shaping higher education, and um, yeah, what's, uh, what's happening um, in, or within the next, yeah, around about 65 minutes. Um, we would like to do a quick check-in in a second and also then um, orientate our discussion on, which I'm sure most of you know, uh, the Golden Circle. So we want to dive into the uh, why futures thinking, the um, how futures thinking with a focus on um, stakeholder engagement, co-creation, and then also the what. Uh, so get a little bit more hands-on and practical into how designing and co-designing future-ready future ready education. And um, yeah, maybe before we start with the check-in, a couple of practicalities, housekeeping, so to say. Um, uh, you don't have to take any photos of the slides. We prepared a digital swag bag for you. You'll find every um, slide we present today and also additional material there. Um, also, uh, in, <laughs> in the spirit of the more the merrier, we have two mystery guests joining us in a second um, digitally. So, um, yeah, we look forward to having a discussion also outside of this uh, on site sphere. And um, very important, let's make this interactive. Um, we think this is a conversation, this should be a space where we would like to interact with you. We want to learn together and um, how to design futuring future programs in education, how to collaboratively um, yeah, prepare uh, higher education institutions to become future-proof or strengthen their future viability. So we'll have a microphone up here, we have a chat. So to the online audience, please use the chat, be in contact with us. And um, yeah, that's it. And maybe a quick heads up as well. Uh, we will ask for your takeaways at the end of the session. So keep that in mind and uh, be prepared that we will ask what you will um, share with a colleague after the session. And um, yeah, I would say uh, maybe a couple of words <laughs> about the people who are on stage right now. Um, I'm Yasmin, I'm with Hochschulform Digitalisierung. And um, there I'm uh, very much interested in futuring and also uh, co-creative programs with higher education institutions. That's the angle I'm bringing in today and I'll happily share insights and learnings from programs uh, we did in that sphere. And um, maybe one note that, uh, concerning Hochschulform Digitalisierung. We are German Think and Do Tank and we bring together a broad community around uh, the digital transformation in teaching and learning and uh, work with different stakeholders from higher education institutions, um, politics, uh, business and society, and I'll hand over to Gül. Thank you. So, my name is Gül. Is it? Yes. yes. Thank you. My name is Gül. I uh, am the lead futurist at SURF, which is like a counterpart of HFD, but then in the Netherlands. So we are a collaborative IT organization for education and research in the Netherlands, and we have around well, 115 members that we need to align somehow on IT landscape. Um, and since a couple of years we started doing futuring and I have the pleasure there to basically um, co-create futures and then co-shape them together with the member institutions to make education and research in the Netherlands uh, better, so to speak. As part of the check-in, we would, of course, like to know who's here, also who's in the uh, online audience. And since we are dealing with this hybrid setting, um, Gül would uh, keep an eye on the chat and um, uh, yeah, ask you to introduce yourself. Um, maybe you want to share where you're joining from, which institution, what role you have at that institution. And um, we've prepared also a little poll, which I think is going to be live just uh, now. And I would focus on the on-site audience. And um, in the spirit of also, I don't know, becoming a bit more active, I would ask everyone to stand up if you can. Um, we have also a hand raise option um, in a second, too, if you feel um, not like standing up, but if you if you can and like, please uh, stand up. Maybe yes, yeah. Now, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put cool. your lunch aside. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, and we would be interested to see, um, yeah, what status groups um, are represented here. So 
Um, please sit down if you're not a university lecturer. So we have only the university lecturers standing up. Or the people who are <laughs> standing, you could maybe <laughs> um, go a bit into knees. OK, thank you so much. Everybody um, could stand up again. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're um, a representative from university management, please um, uh, stand up. The other ones could sit down for a second. University management, or round about, OK. Thank you. Um, OK, now we change it up maybe a little. Everybody can sit, but only um, the students stand up. I see where the students are. A very, yes, thank you for joining. Very <laughs> um, important perspective in terms of um, futuring uh, as well, obviously. Uh, teaching support facilities. Anyone from teaching didactics? OK, cool, thank you. And um, maybe last but not least, um, do we have any representatives from politics ministries with us here right now? Yes, they are. Thank you for joining us. OK, cool. Um, one, how's it in the digital um, sphere, Gul? Do we have? Most of the attendees online are teaching support facilities. OK, interesting. And see, um, maybe one more um, question in terms of checking in. And you just have to, <laughs> or you just ask to raise your hand if it applies to you. Um, who would uh, say? I have no experience so far with futuring or futures thinking. Please raise your hand. This is a safe space. You can, <laughs> you can uh, share that. It's <laughs> not an issue. OK. Um, who would say I have somewhat of an experience with futuring, futures thinking? OK. And uh, who would say I have like extensive uh, experience? Maybe I've um, done workshops or programs at my institutions. I um, feel like I have had a little deep dive <laughs> already. Who where people with more extensive expertise. Are there any? Yeah? OK. So you might be joining us next time on stage. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> whoever uh, shared that, we might come back to you um, later. And everyone else, uh, thanks for participating. And um, let's take a look at the online audience. It's How's it? More or less the same online. Okay, people so having some experience and people having not so many experience yet. Okay, cool. Um, and also the reason why we ask that is because, as I said before, we would like this to be um, basically a conversation or as interactive as possible. So please feel always free um, to also share your insights and learnings. I think this um, is something that we um, are very interested in and our speakers as well, that we use this as a um, learning experience for all of us and maybe also, um, yeah, uh, gain um, insights and take them home with us or to our institutions afterwards. And um, so we would like to dive with you into our first uh, thematic building block, um, the why, why futures thinking. And um, uh, I think we probably all agree that as a, as a society, we face very complex challenges. And there is um, yeah, a big need to deal with uncertainty, to also navigate through this uncertainty and complexity. And um, we need discussions on the future, or on how to actually actively and collaboratively shape the futures. Because what um, is uh, evident is that our, or how we envision the futures actually translates into our actions. So futures thinking has very practical um, implications for um, shaping the futures we envision. So um, this makes, I'd say, futures thinking um, not just an add-on or a gimmick, but actually very, very relevant and um, uh, needed in terms of also how to design higher education, um, or how to develop higher education. And uh, we would like to dive more deeply into um, the discussions on, yeah, with you, with our guests, with us on stage, on how to uh, collaboratively shape um, the future of education and to remain relevant, to remain and or strengthen the future viability. And uh, for that, and I actually like that quote a lot, I think you <laughs> put it, um, yeah, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So there's a very active 
um, angle to futuring and also maybe a call to action to all of us to um, design it together. And um, I'm super happy that we have our first guest um, joining us, um, Carsten Beck, uh, who I think should be on right now. Is <laughs> Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Carsten. <laughs> very nice to see you. Um, uh, a very warm welcome from Berlin um, to Copenhagen. Um, we are so uh, excited to have you with us. Carsten Beck is um, head of research at the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies, and um, he's been working um, at the Institute for 30 plus years and has been working in more than 30 uh, countries, and he um, has been exploring futures with great enthusiasm, um, high energy, <laughs> together with audiences from global stages um, to smaller group focused presentations and workshops, from big companies to local schools and NGOs. And um, I like <laughs> you said, uh, the future is fun and sometimes scary. And uh, based on your insights created together with your colleagues at the Institute and uh, global clients, uh, you bring always new perspectives, new cases, and lots of enthusiasm to any conversation on the future and how to shape it. So we're super happy to have you here and um, have you share some insights from your work and the importance of futuring. So I would hand over to you, Carsten, and um, click through your presentation for you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Jasmine. Uh, let, let's go to the first slide. And, and so sorry, guys, that couldn't be there in in person, but uh, I guess this is part of the future to have hybrid, <coughs> sorry, hybrid formats also uh, when it comes to uh, future festivals. Uh, as was said in the beginning, my name is uh, uh, Carsten Beck and I work at uh, the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies and we are one of the oldest uh, think tanks um, working with uh, corporate and, and societal foresight. Uh, we were actually founded by uh, Mr. Torkel Christensen that, that you will be able to see on the screen right now in a conversation with uh, John F. Kennedy back in the days. Uh, and, and we work uh, from an interdisciplinary perspective, uh, very explorative, meaning that, that some of the trends and some of the insights can be positive to societies and organizations, and some of them can actually pose quite big uh, challenges and, and, and uh, difficulties. We work globally, 40 uh, co-workers, and we have uh, clients. Uh, right now, we, we are not in, in, in Russia because of the war, but we have uh, clients uh, worldwide. Uh, if you go to the next slide, one of the key elements and key focus points at the Copenhagen Institute is actually this thing that was mentioned in the beginning of, of um, uh, this uh, event about futures literacy, because we see at SIFS that one of the key questions for our societies to develop in a sustainable manner, in, 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 in the broader sense of the, uh, the term sustainable, we need to address the fact that not very many um, uh, people in our society, citizens, are actually engaging in these conversations. So that's why we have partnered up with UNESCO uh, in order to create the Danish Hub uh, and probably also the Nordic Hub for the Teach the Future initiative, which is basically an initiative trying to support, to support students uh, and, 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 and young people in, in their uh, capability and, and the, their uh, may, maybe also the, the dreams and hopes related to uh, to the future. So we're trying to get from a perspective where future studies actually one of you said it's a gimmick uh, and, and maybe it used to be a gimmick uh, a generation ago uh, but now we see uh, future studies and foresight as something much much more important and we need to broaden the perspective. This is very easy to say. It's quite difficult to do in real life, but that is really, really one of the main concerns. If you go to the next uh, slide, uh, because that, that that is basically what we're trying to, to do this quote from Eric Hoffer from uh, the US saying that 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 foresight and future studies, we see that as a process where it is about engaging a wide uh, range of uh, voices. And, and, and when you engage a, a wide and diverse range of voices, it is about uh, learning. Uh, it is actually less about knowing the, the, the answers uh, right here, uh, right now, also uh, to, to, um, uh, called the expert uh, problem. So once again, how can we get more stakeholders in society and also into uh, organi in organizations to engage in these 
conversations. Next slide, please. Um, what, what, one of the key dilemmas at, at SIFS, and, and maybe one of the things you could discuss in Berlin today, is how to get data about the future. Uh, and, and we see that as, as quite a big challenge as well, because obviously there will be lots of data streams uh, supporting the megatrends and the scenarios that you will be uh, formulating in your foresight uh, processes. But there will also, and, 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 and one of you mentioned uh, once again in the beginning, the word uncertainty. We need to embrace the concept of uncertainty, uh, going from a, a, a perception of foresight where it was about getting the, getting the right models and, and thus getting the right answers, to have this combination of, once again, the many diverse voices that will allow us to combine data, which is important. I'm an economist myself, so data is super, super important, but to combine that uh, not only with creativity and it, uh, imagination from the many voices, but maybe also in the future from, from um, uh, AI supported systems that will help create, once again, not answers, but actually looking into the right questions, which you can see on the next, uh, next slide. Uh, because what, what we are, uh, um, uh, often when we have these uh, foresight processes, what we are struggling with is actually to formulate the right questions. And we think that will be, once again, on a societal and an organizational level, maybe one of the key, key components uh, going forward with uh, foresight. What are, for the, the, the following generations in Germany and in Denmark and in all our countries, what are the questions we need to answer? Uh, that kind of scoping in foresight processes uh, we would like to put more uh, emphasis on. So less about finding answers right here, right now, more about looking into what are the key questions that need to be formulated in our uh, society. Uh, I, I mentioned I'm an economist, uh, so for me, uh, if you take a concept like growth, I would say it's, it's GDP per capita. That's the way it is. I'm 56 years old, I've been working with GDP per capita all my life. life. Maybe, maybe that's, that's not the right, right uh, question. Maybe, maybe we need to, uh, 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 or the right, right way to way formulate that. that. Maybe, maybe we need to broaden also, also the, 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 the perspectives on, on, on what, what is growth and, and what is quality, quality of life. life. So just, just uh, as, as one, one uh, example. example. The, the final, final uh, two slides, uh, go to that. that. Uh, this is actually a slide that will be in the scratch bag. This is one. This is sort of a checklist for doing good foresight. And these are just just lines. And, and, I and I would like, like to invite you all to the conversation uh, uh, that we'll have here today and, and, and in the following conversations we'll have at your event to, event to maybe, maybe make, make some deep dives into some of these uh, headlines. headlines. You will, you will and that will be the last slide and the last, last words uh, for me. Uh, you will be able to access the uh, uh, chart uh, using QR codes you can see on the screen now. First of all, you can go to SIFS website to learn more about what SIFS are doing. And then, and then we, we have, have a report, a report. It's a, couple it's a couple of years, years old, old, but I think still it, 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 it's, it's uh, of, of value. value. We, we have, have a, a copy of our use future, future report, report that's been down for free, free, which, which shows, shows um, and, and, and tries try to describe the, the why and, and the how and, and the, the co-creation aspects, aspects of our foresight and, and, and future studies. Thank, you, Thank so you so much for, for uh, inviting, inviting me and, and over to you, Jasmine. Thank you so much, Carsten, um, for your uh, yeah, brief impulse, and I think a lot of food for thought. Um, we, uh, since we have a little bit of a time lag, 30 seconds, we decided, um, and <laughs> it, it fits really well that we see the slide with the QR codes, um, that we will keep the, um, the interaction in the chat and on stage. But as you can see, there are uh, different ways to contact um, Carsten and the CFS and uh, be in touch afterwards as well. And we uh, would maybe take up your invitation <laughs> to look at the checklist, um, as you said, maybe as a conversation um, starter and be interested to hear what um, you online and um, also uh, you uh, here uh, with us in this <laughs> outdoor stage, think about um, how to enable better futures thinking. Um, does that resonate with you? The checklist Carson presented, is there anything you would maybe from your experience want to add, challenge? Also, Gül, you've been doing a lot of work at SURF um, uh, with higher education institutions. Let's um, yeah, open the floor to um, some interaction to make it a bit uh, yeah, more uh, together uh, seen. Um, Sounds great. And then, Carson, thank you. 
Um, I also refer most of the time when I give a presentation, I always point out this slide as well. It's a very nice slide to basically show what you need to consider before starting any project even. Um, but I do also wonder, because you know, when I give this, th this slide, uh, the checklist, I highlight most of the time three things that I think are you know, like the things that I find important. But I'm also wondering, Carsten, if you had to pick uh, three things, which are the things that you would say from this checklist are the ones to definitely keep in mind? Is he still there? I avoid the near predictions. That would be a very, very, very critical because we tend to see in organizations and societies the future is sort of a straight line and a narrow line. So I want to be near near predictions. That would be the first one. The second one would be to search for diversity in voices. Knowing that diversity, I mean, diversity is a buzzword. But really to look into Especially when you do the scope, scope thing, thing uh, in foresight, what, what are the key elements, elements that need to go into, into this uh, process? process? And then, and then finally, finally, as, as, as we're, we're talking, talking about universities, universities and we're we talking, talking about um, uh, uh, foresight on, on, on sort of a, a societal level, level and, 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 and educational, educational institutions, um, and, and, and this is not on the checklist, list, I think. I would be super concerned, and I am super concerned about how we can attract all, all the people, people that are not, not present, present at your uh, fantastic events uh, uh, and, and get them into, into these uh, uh, kind of, of, of um, uh, processes and, and, and way, way of, of thinking. thinking. So, 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 so I would say uh, the, the big, big challenge, challenge is not, not all of us who's present, present here, here I basically or, or digitally, digitally. It's, it's everybody, everybody else. else. Uh, uh, they're busy with their own lives, lives with their own careers, careers studies, whatever have we. And they have a passive attitude, attitude uh, to, to the future. future. You, don't, you don't, uh, don't, people in the room and people, people online, online. you're active, active. Otherwise, otherwise you wouldn't would be here, here uh, to partake in, in, in this. this. But how, how can we get, get the, 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 the vast majority, majority who are not active, active. How, how can we get, get them on board? board? That for me is pretty critical. Perfect, thank you. I think it's, it's almost uh, already the perfect um, transition to our second uh, thematic building block where we want to look at the how and focus on participation, stakeholder engagement, co-creation. Think, um, But we will still be able to have uh, one more question. Let's see in the chat if there's anything going on there. Um, not right now. Um, maybe um, from your side, anything you would like to add or maybe also to stress in terms of... Um, Yes, um, there is someone in the audience, uh, in the middle. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, I just downloaded the link uh, from the QR code, so I don't know what to expect in that PDF, but um, with all these Im impressive meta terms, uh, if I plan a project, you said, Carsten, uh, before starting the project, be start before starting planning something, you should have this like mindset in your mind. But as a project manager, mm -hmm. I would think, okay, how do I translate this in, in like in a concrete checklist or something that I can orient myself uh, uh, better? Like acknowledge the broken compass. Okay, this could start a, a more metaphorical uh, uh, a crisis in my uh, head, but. I want to do something. I want to create something for the future. So how do I proceed? This would be my, my interest. May maybe the PDF is the yeah, answer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, 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 it could be. And the free can come me after as well. well. Uh, 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 I, I mean, I mean uh, in my mind, mind, you should you only be foresight uh, uh, when, when your organization or the team, or the team uh, are, are ready. ready. And, 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 and when you have a purpose. purpose. Uh, actually, and, and, and I mean, I mean please, please don't tell uh, anyone this. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we see organizations saying, OK, okay scenario planning seems to be of, of interest, interest or, or something, something that, that, that our competitors are doing, let's, let's do the same. same. And, and, and those, those processes, processes they, 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 they are, are not, not uh, working. working. So, so you, you need, need either to have, have a, a, 
a quest, a quest where, where you want, want to explore, explore uh, uh, could, could be challenges, challenges and, and, and broken, broken compasses, compasses for business, business models, models, for, for, um, for, 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 for I don't know, know for, for, for your intuition, intuition or, or for your team, team. Could, could also be, be a way, way of, of, of uh, generating, generating new thoughts, thoughts and, and, and new ideas, but, but, but it, it is actually quite uh, tricky, uh, especially in, in my experience, uh, in my years as a, as a, as a as futurist, futurist, if you have an organization that is doing quite well, well. Uh, and, and you all know, know the Kodak samples, samples, samples and the blood blood and all of that. that. Uh, but, but, but what we, we see that uh, today where, where organizations are saying, and maybe, maybe, maybe that we even go for universities, universities. I don't know. Uh, uh, that, that, that we are, we are, we are doing, doing fine. fine. Universities uh, and, 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 and education in Germany, in Germany and Denmark, etc. Et is, is absolutely, absolutely going, going to be part of the future. So why do we actually need to have foresight? Uh, so, so, so you have to have these conversations. You have to have a real issue, a real problem. Problem, problem that, that want, want to, to, um, uh, to to solve. solve. I think maybe I can add um, to that. Uh, responding to your question, um, that when we uh, in a minute or so talk about programs, we did maybe we could make it also a bit um, or touch upon the translation part of like how to trans translate this into actual programs. Share some insights from um, also programs we did with universities and um, also our next mystery guest, um, how they um, proceeded and uh, let's make this. Uh, or see this as a discussion starter, some food for thought, and then see where we could also um, share, um, yeah, also practical tips and um, maybe also resources and material and keep this conversation um, going. Um, and with that, uh, Kasten, I would say thank you a lot. And um, uh, yeah, best wishes to Copenhagen. Um, talk to you soon. Uh, it was great to have you here for this uh, short slot. And um, we, yeah, we would continue here with our second mystery guest. Um, not so mysterious anymore because it's been <laughs> on the program uh, side, but <laughs> maybe um, <laughs> still some sort of uh, surprise. Uh, thank you, Carsten. See you soon. And thank um, you. Uh, yeah, and we would switch over to our second mystery guest, who's. Um, yeah, <laughs> who's appearing um, here uh, for our <laughs> Hi, um, Raimunda, Raimunda Tominaskas. Um, we are super happy to have you here with us uh, today. Um, you're uh, joining us for this slot on the How Futures Thinking and will focus with us on co-creation and stakeholder engagement. Um, you are the head of department at um, uh, of Networks and Services, Infrastructure in Postnime Supercomputing and Networking Center, PSNC, and you've been working in the environment um, of the National Research and Education Networks, NRENs, uh, contributing to national and international efforts in uh, various positions, and um, uh, Raimundas currently leads the activity of the Giant Foresight Study, focusing on the future of the NREN, uh, community in 2030 and beyond, and that's uh, why we thought it would be super interesting to have you here and share some insights with us um, from your very interesting work and the foresight study, and we would hand over to you for a quick impulse and um, uh, yeah, a chat afterwards with the online audience and our on-site audience. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, hope I can see my slides. So, so my name is Raymond Dunaskas, I work for Postal Sensor Computing Network Center, and the operator of the Pioneer Network, who is the counterpart of, of, the, of what served us in the Netherlands. Netherlands. So we do that in Poland and, and on the Pan European, European level, level uh, we, we have the association called Xiang, who, who is also providing. Uh, the pan European, European level of the, the, of the services. services. Uh, so, so uh, you want to, to go to the next slide, slide please? please. Uh, I, I represent, represent here, here the study, study and it's more like how, how we did that. that. Uh, the course I study, study for, uh, for, for the Renren uh, community, for the Renren community, for the Renren community, including Jiang. And, and it's, uh, we, we see that, that as, as a sort of input for the strategic discussion. Uh, to look into, into how, how to define, to define how, how to define our strategy, our strategy and how, how to um, how, how to shape our future as a matter of fact. So, so the first uh, attempt at the uh, 
uh, foresight, foresight in, uh, within, within our community, community actually, actually served, served them. them. The, last the last one was in 2016, so it's, so it's more or less 10 years, 10 years um, uh, in, between, uh, between, uh, in between those attempts, attempts. so, so it's, it's a good way to look into the future and to, uh, to define the key aspects of the future if we go to the next slide. Uh, so we looked into how, and we decided uh, we defined the three stages. First stage was scoping and formation of the necessary uh, stakeholder engagement activities, and then uh, there were two phases related to the uh, to the futuring itself. One was identifying the major disruptors and then prioritizing them. And this, uh, another uh, final phase was to identify the pathfinding, to identify the scenarios and identify the recommendations based on those scenarios. Uh, so both phases con consisted of two uh, steps. One step was sort of widening the horizon, uh, considering, considering, uh, considering more scope, and then prioritizing uh, and thus uh, narrowing the horizon. So next slide, please. Uh, in order to do that, we had three parallel processes. So one was the project team, us who work at uh, at uh, Giant, uh, together for uh, to to create the documents and then so on. We had also internal group of experts from uh, our members uh, to provide this sort of internal work and to shape the uh, to identify the disruptors, identify the challenges, to help them prioritize and so on. However, we also engage with the wider community, with the wider community of stakeholders, including the universities, including students, including the uh, big research infrastructures like CERN and ESA. Uh, that was done by sort of establishing interviews with uh, with the uh, representatives of each uh, uh, of each stakeholder. Next slide, please. So for the challenges, we identified like more than 50 of those challenges or potential disruptors. And the uh, outline is that we um, yeah, we identified six of them as the highest priority. And we, you can see some of the challenges that may be related to, uh, to the whole research and education community interaction with the commercial uh, players. Uh, where uh, commercial players increasingly see the research and education as a as a as their share of market, which was not not uh, not evident that much before, uh, employment and skills, climate change, um, and also the virtualization of research and education. So we try to unpick these challenges and to identify the factors. Next slide, please. And then group the factors so that we can have this sort of scenario machine, uh, the writing the machine that writes the scenario. Next slide, please. Uh, we identified seven groups of the uh, of the factors uh, that uh, that will influence the future: the skills, the data, behaviors, interaction with the commercial players, regulations, funding, and security. Next slide, please. For each of the factors, we identified we identified a number of uh, options, a number of futures that each factor can take. And by choosing these futures, we can create already the storyline. You can see, like for example, this ring fence scenario uh, that we create is uh, is a place where we have nice. Uh, access to the to the workforce where we have uh, uh, where we have um, good access to the funding where we have this sort of uh, good domain for for our activity and that does not necessarily mean that it will transpire by itself in some uh, it will require effort to have this ring fence scenario and that is a part of the strategic discussion, whether we want it uh, to have it or not. Uh, so next slide, please. For example, this is, this is the scenario that we identified as, a, um, as a, uh, something that will transpire with the least influence. 
So there were there were the number of scenarios. I'm showing you the only the scenarios that were chosen by the uh, NRN experts as the highest priority. Next slide, please. And that's my favorite one. Uh, we will address that in the next slide. Uh, playing the fair game, where uh, we as NRNs as entities facilitators of the research and education in, in each country are really market players, so to speak. Next slide, please. And that's the most challenging scenario uh, uh, that we sort of try to define, uh, try to define in, um, in our, uh, in our conversation. So after the, what happens after the scenarios, we try to unpick these scenarios and come up with the um, with the recommendations for strategic actions. So we are not governors. So strategic actions are undertaken by the board, uh, by the exec, and by the people who have the uh, uh, the authority to implement this uh, uh, strategies to define and implement the strategies. So next slide, please. Uh, so, for example, in this uh, in this scenario, we can uh, we can uh, choose. Uh, we can have two kinds of recommendations. So that's the important part, where we recommend to adapt to something or take an action to actively change our way of doing and uh, step out of the box and out of the comfort zone uh, to adapt, or to make a conscious action to implement the future, to define that future. And that is the key because when we start to discuss something, when we start to discuss the actions that we may or may not undertake, we are taking one step forward towards the, uh, towards the implementation of the future, towards the actually the future that we consider becoming a reality. So also this has to be taken care of when we try to discuss this unorthodox solutions or unorthodox futures uh, that they may not really be uh, what, what, what we would really like to happen. However, uh, they are um, the discussion on, on, on that topic may uh, become the reason that they transpire. So with that, uh, I would like to end my short presentation and we'll be happy to take on the questions and thank you for the uh, opportunity to be here. Thank you, Raymond Nas, for uh, walking us through um, your approach. You can hear <laughs> maybe the um, on-site applause. Uh, thanks so much for sharing. Um, your approach um, with the Geant uh, Foresight Study, and I think uh, a very interesting approach in terms of the dimensions um, in the uh, scenario machine, but also the setup of the process and how to um, engage different status groups. I think um, we would have some time and would be interested in, um, and we had a few people here and a few people in the online audience who have somewhat of an experience in futuring and future thinking programs, if you want to maybe add on that. Um, and in general, I think maybe we could also take up the question, uh, I feel like Carsten posed to us the whole uh, question of diversity, how to engage or enable more participation in processes like that. Um, and yeah, we would wing it from there and see what the <laughs> online audience uh, or you would like to add and otherwise uh, have questions on our own as well, I'm sure. Um, but I'm also wondering in the audience, who knows Géant already? Do we use Eduroam? Okay, so that's the link you need to make. If you were using Eduroam and you're traveling around Europe or even worldwide and you have, you're close to a university that has a link to Eduroam, you need to think Géant. Okay. Thanks for contextualizing <laughs> you. I think a uh, very important point. Um, yeah. We don't we have, have online questions yet, um, but we have one on site. Um, Laura, if you want to come up in the front.
Well, I think there are some interesting points about participation, uh, especially in university, I guess. Like, uh, I'm working in a project that tries to engage student participation in their own modules, in their lectures, and uh, creating lectures together, for example, in, a, in some kind of co-creation. And I think it's really important to think about creating a frame for thinking together, for exchanging thoughts. Because only if you have a frame for that, you can really try to get the right questions. It's also very useful to have the questions in advance, to have some uh, questions that you would not normally ask yourself. And I think that's very important about that point. And also I think here it's really important to first know the current state. For example, in, in this example would be the current state of lecture. How are how students' situation, how is uh, lecturer's situation, in order to, to find out what to do, what is working well, and what you can change afterwards. And yes, maybe, uh, um, maybe that's also very important at this point. You have a very good point there, because if we're thinking about futuring, it's not only thinking about the future and what that holds and what the promises are of the future, but that's actually thinking about today. And even I would say thinking about the past, because we're always carrying something with us from the past. Certain things in education are the way they are now for many, many years because of things in the past. Uh, so that's a very important thing to keep in mind, that futuring is not only about the future and thinking about the future, but always about looking where we are now and then how we actually got here and how choices are made today. So yeah, good point. But I'm also looking at the lady who just asked the question about project management and then how to organize and then how to get uh, engagement. And then is Raimunda still with us? Because I'm also wondering, you know, looking at the project and looking at where you are now, are there things you would have done differently, you know, maybe with the initiation of the project? Well, okay, that is an uh, interesting question. Um, probably I will, I will have uh, the answer in a year after the project ends. But uh, I think that what we did good was the scoping exercise and sort of planning how to how to do the stakeholder engagement so we scoping exercise uh, was um, looking into what do we do and what do we not consider so uh, we did not consider for example the uh, global collaboration uh, at this point we sort of focused more on the pan-European level, on the Xi'an level. Uh, and uh, on this, uh, and also uh, the stakeholder engagement. How do we do stakeholder engagement? So we decided to have uh, like an internal group of experts who were dedicated by the members of the association, but also to widen the scope and to sort of to try to get the views from uh, outside the community to not, not be limited to, to, to the scope of, of the association uh, to engage with the, with the partners, to engage with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the members of the wider research and education community. Uh, so that, uh, uh, that was, I think, good. Yeah, that were the good choices and that's a good starting point to define the scope and to define the timeline and to define what happens after the foresight report is written because that's it's really not the end it's only the beginning of the next phase uh, uh because the foresight report is the basis for the for the further discussion indeed. it's not a strategy by itself indeed no i mean and looking at my own experience it, it always you know as an organization, we have done many reports. I mean, many vision papers are out there, trend reports are out there. We know we just start with the energy and then after delivering it, you're like, okay, we have a nice paper, but who's actually taking it to the next step now? You know, who's taking the owner, you know, the own feels the ownership and actually putting things into action. And that sometimes is not happening always because we haven't made at the beginning the clear uh, agreements. Um, so yeah. 
That's uh, the, the scoping and the ownership are indeed uh, important things to keep in mind here. I feel like maybe to just add on that um, from the experience we have at Hochschulform Digitalisierung, I think one, maybe not the solution, but one solution is also one approach is to engage all the relevant status groups in processes like that. For example, um, at the program we did uh, um, have divisions, we had uh, representatives from um, higher education management, students, lecturers, so different um, stakeholder groups together who created a vision for their own institution. I think it definitely gave a good transition or point of um, yeah, translating it into the different um, into the different levels that are necessary to then actually pick up on what's been created in a very, as you said, like a lot of energy, a lot is happening. You create um, future scenarios that are interesting, that are um, that engage, that are desirable. And um, but what's happening next? And I think. Uh, there we come back to co-creation, stakeholder engagement. It also depends probably on who's taking part in these processes. And I think you said before um, the question from the audience about the framework. It's also it needs like a it needs like a process too, and um, that goes beyond, for example, report. So to yeah. say. Um, uh, and then actually with with futures thinking and actually doing futuring, it's just, you know I tend to see it more as in. It's not about the end result, so it's never about the paper, but it's more about the process and having the conversation and getting the people engaged and actually getting them to share their view, their knowledge, and collectively talk about where do we want to go, rather than, oh, here's a nice paper and we spent uh, so much money on it and it's uh, 100 pages and no one reads it. Okay. Well, so maybe a little bit uh, comment from my side. Uh, I mean, since it's not the not the first uh, foresight exercise that we do in Xi'an. So previous were uh, met my personal uh, success criteria, which as a as a member of the association, I could take that uh, those reports and go to the, uh, on the national level, go to the policymakers and go to the to the funding bodies. And go to the uh, to the management, to the boards and and uh, and councils of rectors and so on, and say that this is the direction uh, that uh, that European immigrants are considering. So that is also that is also certain success criteria for the foresight study. If it forms the basis for the further discussion, for the argumentation um, uh, on the future direction. Uh, that is um, uh, that is a good uh, a good uh, foresight study for me. All right. Um, thank you also to Raimundas for making time, also for um, yeah giving us I think great insights into the foresight study your approach and also food for thought to take home with us. And um, we would uh, transition here to our last short thematic building block on the what and maybe some practical hands-on tips or experiences from our programs, um, uh, the Dutch perspective and um, German one. Uh, many thanks, Raimundas. It was great having you here and um, <laughs> we'll be uh, in touch. And I think you also in, uh, invited everyone to, um, yeah, uh, follow up on what you're doing with Giant and also um, be in touch and learning maybe more from your side. And uh, here we are, and I think <laughs> we are <laughs> um, almost, uh, yeah, in, uh, um, towards the end of our session, which uh, flew by with our mystery guest, no more mystery guest, just um, Gun and I <laughs> on stage, <laughs> and uh, you and the online audience, and we thought, um, which also might be a, a little transition into the um, wrapping up, taking uh, take away part, think about what are learnings from programs we did at SURF, at Hochschulform, um, how to design future ready education, maybe more on the, um, with a focus on learnings, takeaways, what would um, what would you recommend if you want to get started, if you feel like futuring, I'm <laughs> I'm interested, I want to I wanna change, and I think everyone that's here is interested in making a positive change and impact um, on in their, um, yeah, in their institutions, so maybe go from your experience um, with surf and futuring activities. Um, what would you say? What, um, how to get started? How, what are maybe uh, what are maybe learnings that you could share with the audience here and online, uh, which you thought was helpful in terms of yeah uh, implementing futuring programs with higher education institutions? 
yeah, I, I don't know where to start, but I'll just start from the beginning. <laughs> Um, so it started for me uh, three years ago, and in, in the organization, you know, typically, as if you're big, and then when you're big, a lot is happening, and you can't keep track of who's doing what. So it started for me with actually going around and then asking around and looking at what has been published before, like, okay, who is already doing foresight? Who is publishing trend reports? Who is talking about a future? Uh, so for me, it was first about looking internally about what's already going on and getting to understand, like, okay. Uh, how are colleagues already approaching things? So one thing I discovered, for example, and this is what I found very interesting, is that within we had within one unit, we had three program managers who were doing foresight, who were doing a foresight activity. And all three of them had three different consultants with three different approaches, and they were not aware of each other that they e actually were doing this project and actually having three different consultants with three different methodologies. So that was like, okay, guys, maybe we need to align here more and then start to think about, okay, how do we capture learnings? Um, and basically that then made for me also the link like, okay, if, you, if we talk about futuring and foresight, I also have colleagues who tend to make it bigger, as in almost have a scientific approach to things because it comes across as you're predicting the future and people want to measure how accurate your future is. And I'm like, just drop it. I, it's not about actually predicting, but more about imagining and being able to think and talk about your views on uh, where it could go. So that's also where I um, saw the link, at least, when we're talking about knowledge building and knowledge sharing, the link to project management. Because if you do project management, you always need to do also some reflections, like, okay, you know, what have I done here now? Has it worked? Did I got any, you know, further, or do I need to rethink and iterate? And you keep going and going and going. And then I think uh, for us, it also started with highly, you know, having someone or some people who focus energy and time on on bringing alignment and some sort of coordination uh, in the organization. And then, of course, started from the learning. You know, once we started capturing the learnings, we were like, okay, we've seen all those nice reports, all those project hours but it's not getting operationalized. So let's see if we can, you know, think through about what we want to achieve with a futuring exercise before starting it and actually finishing it and saying no one's picking up on this. So get the basics in order. That was uh, how we approached it. Maybe I can piggyback on um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the coordination and setting the framework part because um, from our experience at uh, Hochschule Farm, we did uh, just re briefly um, a program, six month program, uh, co creative program with university teams, small teams, and we created and um, yeah, future scenarios for the institutions. It was a six month program in two cohorts, and I think what I learned in that process was it needs that there, there needs to be some facilitation for this to happen as you said it needs someone to bring uh, the strings together and I think the same holds true for universities there's not that much time maybe it doesn't have to be that in each university there are different people who dive into the same um, research and uh, so on and I think all that we are here also focus on this collaboration aspect and uh, think that we can only better move forward together and I think the same holds true for futuring that you can bundle expertise you need someone also to facilitate the process and to guide you through because I think if I ask you um, what's your vision for your institution in 2035 it's kind of hard to like just like ad hoc I mean you will have ideas and I'm sure everyone has like visions but it needs a process you need to more holistically also look at um, what kind of like factors could actually play into that um, future we try to envision and we want to move forward to. And I think um, how to create alternate futures. There, as you said, it's there's not only one, and uh, it's not like the goal to have like a future scenario and then just implement it, but to keep going and reimagining, reenvisioning futures that we think are um, desirable possible and then also see how can we get there together and I think um, we've mentioned before the students I think the diversity and perspectives and um, status groups to take part in processes like that is crucial as well because uh, I don't think there's a 
uh, there are future scenarios that can also can only be looked at from a single perspective. Um, so I think uh, how to engage the different status groups at a university and maybe also beyond uh, the higher education institution we've talked about civil society, like who are those that are more passive or that we need to um, collect around that idea. I think there are a lot of um, questions and a lot of potential to create futures together. And I think, um, yeah, these are some of the learnings uh, we've had. But I'm also looking at the audience yeah. because you said that you had some experience. You have done something around foresight, right? Yes, no. Does it resonate what we say here, or? There's one um, question there. Okay. Um, hi, yes. Uh, so I don't know if it's what I would say is foresight. So sometimes you, know, you get stuck in those uh, terminologies. But the things that we're doing in my project, Students University, we're using design thinking as a process to exactly accompany the, the whole mindset, the coming together of different status groups, and to facilitate that happening. Um, and one of the things that struck me, particularly what you were saying, um, Gil, I think, was about we need to envision the future in different ways, but that means we need to allow for agility. And my experience in the German space, I'm not German, my accent is giving it away, um, <laughs> is that we, pr we write those documentations, we write those reports to make ourselves look good, to say we accomplished this. We don't share what didn't work. Mm. And as long as we keep hiding what didn't work, I don't know if we can really pro progress. And exactly what I like about what you're saying with the scoping, by doing an in-depth scoping, you can find the actual lived experiences and see where are the real challenges that would make these people engage. And when we do that on our own and then sell it as we did everything right, I think that's contributing to that passive attitude. So if we really want innovation in future, we have to start saying we don't know the answer. We have to start allowing questions to be asked. We have to start allowing them to make mistakes because that's how real innovation can only happen because that only happens when you push the boundaries. And when you push boundaries, you will make mistakes because they're being pushed. So that's more of a cultural plea, but the one thing that came out of our project was by having that kind of honest approach in the facilitation and by bringing the people together to start saying it's not about one of us having the right answers, it's not about all of us putting problem-based learning into every classroom, but it's about the experience and that we align the experience and think about where does it fit and have just that conversation uh, so that you see which colleagues are doing it already. Where does it fit? Where we and, and stop sort of the, my teaching, in particular for universities, my teaching's just for me. Mm -hmm. And if I make a mistake, I'll be blamed. And we need to start looking at the learning and start looking at it as an alignment that the university wants to provide this, ex this student journey. I know it's a buzzword, but it actually does mean this journey the student is doing. And their perspective's different than a single professor or, or teacher teaching one class, right? It's really that holistic. So I, I don't know if there was much in there, but hopefully there was something that you liked. <laughs> yeah, I think a la another lady liked it as well yeah. there. Yeah. Anyone else who would like to add something to that? Recognize it as well? Then, uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I think um, you put it <laughs> very well into words, and I saw a lot of people in this uh, <laughs> on site audience nodding and this um, call to action or plea for more like an openness and also um, uh, and also failing our culture that um, comes with it. So thank you yeah. very much for stressing that point. I think that's. Um, very, yeah. It is. I mean, even on. in the Netherlands, we see it as well. Uh, I mean, especially in certain fields, you know, when you're trying to facilitate a, a workshop or a conversation, you really need to start working on, like, okay, guys, this is a safe space. You know, try to think freely. Let go of today. So, you know, you spend really some time and attention working on that and the mindset of the people to getting them freed up. Uh, in order to then start thinking and start talking freely without feeling that they're giving someone a stick to hit them with later. So it is something I recognize and it is a hard work and it's not easy. So uh, where's the mic? Where's the mic on? 
Just if I, if I may, just to respond directly to that, in, in, a, in a higher education context specifically, you're absolutely right that we have people who are used to being the expert in the room, very often let's put that as the teacher side, and you have students who have gone through a system where failure can mean shame, and so you have a hierarchy that is very implicit even though we all know it's there, and so you need to move them into those roles for both sides. So if we want students to participate equal, but they're against their professors who are judging them, it's very yeah. difficult. But this thing we're trying to do with the futuring, the professors are not the experts in. But that makes them uncomfortable to no longer be the expert. So we need to work on both sides to make that shift in the roles. And that requires the facilitation, 100%. And now I'm actually done, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I think that was also already kind of like a um, uh, wrap up uh, round and I saw the subtle sign <laughs> that we have two minutes left. Um, and uh, as we said before, please um, share and I look at the online audience and maybe takeaways uh, in the chat and maybe a quick Yes, yeah, so the chat has been active and then people sharing uh, links and, and references all over. That's so great. Okay. they are sharing their knowledge already. Uh, but I'm also trying to look around. Who is leaving with something new? Claire. Something new, yes? You're taking things away with you? Okay. Okay, now we're relieved now. Um, and maybe also <laughs> an invitation um, to everyone online, but also on site. Let, uh, this is the first day of the festival, so we have many possibilities to be in touch, to talk more about futuring, maybe to share insights, programs, um, approaches, maybe ideas, new ideas as well. So we look forward to that. Thank you so much to Gül for being here on stage today and also um, everything happening before and uh, conceptualizing the session. We thought it would be interesting to bring on international perspectives also here to Berlin. And um, if you have questions, we are here today exactly. and tomorrow, I assume. Yes. At least I am here tomorrow. So. Yeah, please feel free to come up to us and let's uh, keep the conversation going. As we said, we have a digital swag bag prepared for you. Um, the slides are in there, more material also from uh, like trend reports from SURF and so on, but also um, other external so resources that we thought were interesting or helpful. So please check it out and um, thank you so much for your interest. And um, till next time. Yeah, <laughs> bye. <laughs>